Hey everybody, welcome back. We're just going to, it's uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, what is that? 24th. <laughs> Christmas Eve, 24th of December. Every year. Every year is the same. <laughs> I was going to say 2024. Oh my. Gosh, next year it will be. 12, 24, 24. 24, yeah. 2024. So. Tongue twister. So we're. Basically, we just wanted to come on here and wish you guys a very blessed Merry Christmas. And despite what people come up with and what they say about, you know, the holiday, it's celebrate it the way you want. Just keep God, in, in, you know, the focus because he's the one that brought his son here on the day that we uphold Jesus' birthday. I mean, we've been over these things back and forth about time-wise shepherds being out it'd be like saying here in january that we're going to go outside and camp most likely you probably wouldn't try to do that but either way um so you know so basically just kind of I'll, I'll let darling go first just kind of go and give your appreciation like what does Christmas really mean to you <laughs> I wish you would have told me this earlier this well because bit. then it's like scripted now it's not scripted what am I thankful for well what? what does Christmas really mean to you I, I mean if you had to with all the stuff that goes on today what people say about Christmas and I mean even Christians come against Christmas it, you know because they want to you know, but they, it seems like more people are upholding Halloween and well, thinking I, it's... For me, it's, I mean, the, the Lord knows our heart. So people can say what they want, but it just depends on what's in your heart. Because that's what really matters. It's what God knows our heart. So if your heart is all about getting gifts and not about Christ, he's our gift. He's the only reason why we should ever celebrate life in the first place. Any. You know, uh, it, it should be a celebration of him coming to the earth because our father loved us so much that he knew we needed, uh, you know, a perfect, sinless way to be reconciled to our father because he is holy and, and, and we are to be holy. We are to be righteous and we can't even be that without Christ. We, we can't because of our sinful nature being born into sin. So, you know, for me, my heart is Christmas is about Christ. I mean, Nelson hears me say every year, why do we have to spend so much money on Christmas? You know, why, why can't we just do one gift, uh, you know, to give as a recognition of Christ is really our gift you know, it's really not even about us all getting gifts. It's about us glorifying our Lord and being thankful that he was brought to the earth on the day, you know, that we're, we choose to recognize as his birthday. But, you know, most people know it wasn't December 25th. But, um, so for me, you know, it, it's what's in our heart. He's our treasure. He's our gift. He's our everything. If it wasn't for him coming to this earth, we could just imagine how hard and difficult it would be to be holy, to be righteous. To, we would have to do what the Israelites had to do, you know, as far as uh, the sacrifice for sin, the atonement for sin was shedding a, a you know, an animal, uh, the blood and, and all that came with that. And, you know, taking it to the priest, taking our, our, uh, you know, the priest going into the Holy of Holies to, to, uh, what was it, one day a year to, um, so that we could be forgiven of our sins. You know, there was just so much to it. And, and now there's not. Now we can just go to the Lord and confess our sins, repent, and, forgiven be cleansed be purified and uh, so that's what Christmas means to me it means it's a 
time of the year that we celebrate, that we get together and it should be all in love and all about Christ and our Father. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. He's our everything. Without Him, we can't even have breath. Without Him, we can't even have a heartbeat. You know, none of us can control our bodies. We can't control our breath. We can't control our heartbeats. We can't control our mind. We can't control it. We, we, can, we have nothing to do with our life, really. So, that's the long and skinny of it, I guess. Maybe you should have let me prepare a little bit first. <laughs> well, no, because it's... it's it, it, it's more. It's not a real black and white answer, I guess. Well, there, there really probably never will be. No. You know, I, I think back on being a kid, and sometimes I wonder if my thoughts and stuff, if I ever will grow up from that childhood time. You know, I remember in school making those from uh, construction paper, making the chains where you made the loops and they were green and red and we would continue it when we got home like my sisters and them they would bring theirs home and I'd bring mine and we'd start hooking them together and our goal was every year to see if we could get one to wrap all the way around our living room or dining room and just keep it going well you know you think about stuff like that I think about times going to my grandma's you know here in the fireplace crackle and you know, stringing popcorn, sticking your fingers and just laughing and, and I'd be over there crying because I stuck my finger over and over and over. I couldn't wait to string popcorn. <laughs> and, and then you just try to bring on traditions and pass it on to your kids. And, you know, today just thinking about what people were talking about with their kids and stuff. And I just think about how times have changed and how the devil has pulled people and kids and where it's, it should be a glorious time because we should be out you know celebrating Jesus birthday and what he's done because without his birth we would have no hope you know it, there would be no resurrection there would be no forgiveness and we would just continue on this vicious circle of life what we have unfortunately it's going to get worse and you know Christ is going to be next to be taken out of things just like God. And once we start eliminating him out, out of everything, it's we're not going to be able to put Christmas tree signs out yeah. and, and you know nativity scenes. They've been trying to get rid of nativity scenes like crazy. Pennsylvania had a thing. I, I was just driving through there, and I seen on the churches, and the church says uh, something about nativity scene can't go up this year because someone set fire to the other ones and destroyed it. Jeez. So they they don't have nothing now. And people are going around the churches and destroying them. Mm. Uh, you know, only thing I can say is people, you know, it's sad, but I feel sorry for those people that actually do something like that. I mean, it's, you know, nothing goes unpunished. And God sacrificed his son through our punishment, uh, the things that we have done and the things that we should never have forgiveness for, but he gave us forgiveness. Yeah. And truly, you know, it's not about the gifts. I mean, it's not about that. It's not about putting a price on something because, you know, I, I think about people that say, well, we do budgets. And matter of fact, Saturday, when I went back to work, went up to get my paperwork, they were talking about it. They said, hey, do you put a budget? I said, um, um, what are we talking about? On Christmas or any kind of holiday? I said, no. I said, because God didn't put a budget on it. He did. God gave his very best. And through that, Jesus, when he went to the cross, people, he took on every sin, every individual sin he allowed to come into his body and took it to the grave. So, how do we put a, a, a price on love? It, it's impossible. I mean, it truly is. I don't go out, I don't expect her because I bring home 16 things, and I'm, I'm just using a number, that I expect 16 things in return. I don't buy for someone because I expect something in return. I used to. I used to get very mad. I was like, are you kidding me? You know, but that's the world. You know, you could think about 
I used to get upset because my mom would give me a pair of socks every year for Christmas. One pair. And I'd watch everybody else open presents and stuff, and I'd sit there and go. And she told me, well, they got families. And I'm thinking, well, should I get more than them? I mean, that's what I, that's what I would think about. But then I start thinking about it when I didn't get anything. It's like that pair of socks meant something more than what I realized it truly did. Because when you don't have it today, you know, when my mom got older, she started making us cookies and stuff. And today I thought about that on the way driving home. And, and you know, it's back and forth as my mother was, you know, it kind of made me a little sad today because I didn't have that. Uh, you know, I didn't, I'm not able to go over there. And why I'm telling you this is cherish what you have, people. Make, if you're, if you're having difficulties with families or anything, make amends with it. it you know, God forgives, we, we forgive. Don't throw stuff back up in people's face. Just get over it. And because tomorrow might not come. And, and if you're truly a light of Jesus, you may be the only thing that's going to bring them back. So... It, don't be a hypocrite and say, oh, I forgive you, then t 10 days later. Or don't be one of these people that has got to tell the whole dang on story over and over and over. Let it go. Don't even bring it up. They bring it up, shoot it to the side. It's done. It's over. Because if, you, if you're going to relive and hash things, then you got to be prepared for the consequence of the devil showing up. Because he always does. But anyways, I just been thinking a lot today about, you know, the whole Christmas thing and, you know, and trying to get home and it just seemed like the cards were stacking against me more and more and I just, I finally just sat there and I said, you know what, Lord, it's your will be done. You know, whatever happens, happens. And I mean, I pulled in the driveway today with like, I mean, I literally drove the truck home. I dropped the trailer off at the store and drove the truck home. I mean, I got here with a, a few minutes left on that clock and all I can think is and I heard the Lord tell me when I went back for the second load I heard him tell you I will get you home and didn't say what time but I pulled over and did my 30 minutes grab some food and come back and here we are we went out looked at some Christmas lights and got lost mm. You know, man, I had to look it up on a GPS. <laughs> I, I, they I just think they're going to eventually make it. Well, I thought I was in a different... Keep driving and keep driving and I, keep driving. Oh, I'm eventually going to find was, my home. I was going in the right Instead direction. Of though, because... well, you know, back before GPS on his phone, we didn't have phones. My dad would drive forever. My mom said, would you just pull in the gas station and ask how to... And do you think... Men would pull into a gas station and just ask. Why? Why not? We got it all right here. Yeah. Okay. okay. Two hours later, in the wrong direction. Be before we, <laughs> one time I ended up in Pennsylvania because he wouldn't pull over and ask. Oh uh, no, I would not. <laughs> just pull over and ask. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, but I I can't stand Pennsylvania. I don't even like going by the stadium. That whole oh. it, it's a, it's a nightmare up there. I mean, literally. You, know, you would think for them to be in the Super Bowl as much as they had been back in the day, that it's clean around the stadium. Ho the hotel, the only one hotel, the one time we went there, it was like you could see in the window that they had the curtains pulled to the side. Stuff hanging off the ceiling. Well, they remodeled like, you know. a lot of stuff. Now, they well, actually I would got, hope so, because that was many years ago. They but actually still, got, you know, uh, right by the stadium. Right. Well, but, but look at the stadium. Look how nice the stadium is. So, we shouldn't even talk. We didn't have a stadium for five years, so. <laughs> right. I have a team for five years. So, let me ask you. I'm a little grateful that we have one now. <laughs> it's time for those who, who still comment. So, a lot of people don't anymore, but it's okay. But... I can kind of understand what, why, though. It can take some time to comment. What is your favorite memory of Christmas? And what was the favorite, the best Christmas gift you can think of? Even, even if it was a kid. Mm. What would be the thing that you remember the most? And you go, when Christmas comes around, you think about it. And what was, what was your favorite tradition? Do you still do it? I mean, think about it. This will give you some food for thought type things. 
Uh, I can honestly tell you my favorite thing that I remember getting was in Copley when we lived in the crazy house was Star Wars figures. And I got a Tauntaun and I just loved it. I mean, that was like the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. And I can honestly say that as an adult, and I don't know, she's got me a lot of things that I would have to say probably the Carhartt jacket that she got me. I, I still, I when I first opened it up, I thought it was one of the knockoff ones. And I looked at it and it actually said Carhartt on it. Little things like that would touch, it really touched me because I, I never got things like that because it was always for the kids and everything else. And I would do nice I, I would do without, and I, I still it's have still that nice. thing today. I hauled that thing clear to Florida. I think we'd go in a bag because I didn't want it to get something dumped on it or anything like that. And still probably the best. <laughs> But um, there was something I was thinking about the other day. But I don't know if you got it from me for Christmas. It might have been my birthday or something. No, it was Christmas last year. <coughs> she, she got me some Star Wars model ships. <laughs> that was cool. The one doesn't work anymore. I pushed the button too many times. The battery's dead. I was out in the garage flying. Some new batteries in it. I was in the garage flying them around chasing the... Never mind. What about you? Well, I would have to say Time's every up. year we would go on Christmas Eve. I used to, I couldn't wait till Christmas Eve came because we would go to my dad's side of the family and uh, my aunt Betty. She was actually my great aunt. She was my dad's aunt. She didn't have kids, but she couldn't have kids, so she was kind of like a mom to my dad and my uncle because their mom, which would have been my grandma died when they were still in their early 20s because I was only 10 days old when she died. So after she passed, my Aunt Betty just kind of took over and she was like the the place where everybody gathered for the holidays. And so every Christmas Eve, all of our cousins, and I had a big family, all the cousins, we would all gather to her house, eat, and, and have, we would just all have a lot of fun. Um, Christmas Day, though, I think probably the one that I remember being the most exciting when I was a kid was when we got an Atari system. Remember the Atari Space Invaders? Yeah, we didn't and get that for Christmas. My grandma gave me that when I was... When we got it for Christmas, but then we had to wait till my dad played, you know. They always have to wait for the dad to test it out. See, so when... I got the kids. Well, Dad, I want to play. GameCube stuff. I would play with their stuff. When, a lot of the stuff there. was like one player, you know, in the yeah, Atari yeah, system. It, it, yeah, you're right. Like asteroids. Pac-Man, Space Invaders. Yeah. I think we had we we had Space Invaders and asteroids and... Yars Revenge. I don't think we got Pac-Man. I don't remember. I just remember. Q-Bert, which was extremely Man, boring. That's, you know, that's extremely hard. To this day, I, I can get through that few a few rows and back down the other side and that's about it <laughs> i i can think of one of my favorite moments was always my my three sisters and whether we were at my grandma's or we was at my mom's it was pretty cool because we got to make cookies at home and we got to make cookies at my grandma's yeah we did that at my aunt's house and we made them like a couple of weeks like you know like a week or two before though because we went over there every sunday anyway I, I, when I got older, I'm like, God, I hated doing it because she'd make so many cookies. Well, was, she would make us icing the cookies. I, I would say that was probably one of my favorite moments because it was about the only time my sisters and I got along. And now you just think about how distant we are with each other. And, and you know, my one sister's not here. So this time of year, I think about... Uh, you know, even all the crazy arguments and stuff we'd get in, she'd always make me a stocking. She'd always make me an Easter basket. And, you know, I, I think about it, and stockings and our thing was the best. I mean, my grandma always made it great. So it's good to have good memories. It's good to continue on with things. Still today, we do stockings. I mean, I remember when I first got with her, I was like, 
where's the girls with stocking? She goes, we don't have none. I was like, oh, no. I didn't grow up with stockings. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, I was My like, brother and I never got a stocking. To me, that was like, and the first time we did them, I mean, they were so excited. And then, you know, the like, first year she did stockings was the year he died. Go figure. Go figure. And it was a December 7th that he died, and everybody had stockings. Well, she was remarried then, but. No, uh, so Frank's probably family. Probably yeah, family. yeah. Well, let me, we never had stockings, and so me, and that was just an extra cost when my kids were little. I, you know, I had three of them, so I couldn't really afford to do stockings. Yeah, that's that's a lot of money when you got three kids to have to do that. What are you doing now? I'm keeping the rest of the family. Oh my goodness! We, well, the rest of the family's got to say hi and Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite food? Rolls, the yeast rolls, best. These things are so big, you can shove half a turkey inside of them. Okay, that's they a are little really exaggeration. But, you, you know what's great about all this? Is that it's Jesus' birthday, and God gave us the best gift of all on his birthday. And we can give all year round. We don't have to just wait till a certain day to show appreciation. We should be showing Jesus every day. To everybody you know we should really start to really group who we are and just show Jesus daily we, if we show Jesus we're showing God and through the through it we're giving the best gift every day just try to bite your tongue just try to ask Jesus to walk you through stuff to learn and turn the cheek and walk away from people that being said um, I hope and pray you guys all have a very blessed get together. I hope that your families are coming together and you join. Even if even if there's always that one that's going to be nagging and complaining, sitting at a table, or they walk in with the go containers, just fill them up and smile and be thankful that they're taking, they like your food that much. It could be the opposite. They could be bringing in a pizza going, your food sucks. I don't even want to eat it. Not so much our case. Our kids are always, we sit there and look at the turkey bone left and go, really? This year, she's cooking ham. I think this is probably going to be the first year I have not cooked since we've been together. If I don't end up doing another video, she collected the life insurance policy. <laughs> so, what is it that? Anyways, look what she got me. Georgie. We well, gotta keep Georgie away from him. We don't like him. But look. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Does, he doesn't like Snoopy. If, if I do it like this, does it look like the Macy Day float? No, oh, it does, yeah. <laughs> and then she got me. Is there gonna be a pray tomorrow? No. Oh. There was one Saturday, one. the day after Thanksgiving. It's always Saturday in downtown Akron. Yeah. And then she got me Carrie's George. Not Georgie. Carrie's George, you know, the book with the yellow banana guy. And then, of course, we got George. But anyways, Georgie's all snuggled in, ready for his, his moment. He's got a little stocking on the fireplace. Yeah, he's little, got a little candy cane, cane, a little in, candy it. cane in it. <laughs> I, I, I was, well, he's got a big one, too, now. I thought about lighting the fire, but I'm like, I don't want to waste the wood because I know we got some cold weather coming. I mean, let's face it, it's Ohio, it's bipolar. We're about to get slammed with something. So oh, I'm like... Look at the top of your hat, Georgie. Okay. <laughs> so his head always falls off. But anyways, thanks for taking the time and going through this year. And I know we've been through a lot through this year. And just keep praying, people. Don't don't stop praying. I mean, that, that's okay. that's going to be the best Stay tool close that we to have. The Lord. We're going to need you. So... We need to be close to Him every day. Every day for sticking through all these ups and down videos we're still here we're celebrating another Christmas and we thank you we appreciate you we love you and our family to yours have a very merry blessed Christmas God bless you we love you you Can't wait to see you all on Zoom. Zoom. I'm really looking forward to it, especially the ones that we don't know what you look like yet.
which I think a lot of you we do. We don't look what he looks like because we did the Zoom, but and a couple of them have their picture on there, on their little circle thing. They could a few of them photo do. crop that off of somebody else's page. You know, your space, my I mean, space, my space. Supposedly they're Christians coming onto your well, not station. All, not all of them claim to be. I mean, some of them are well, pretty wicked. I couldn't imagine that they would be interested in, unless they are a Christian. Why would you be interested in well, look testimonies like, if you're not a Christian? But look at the one person got on there said they, they wish that they could meet me in person and have their dog eat my well, face. Well, I mean, come on. That's not a Christian, really. I mean, I'm talking about a person who really truly loves the Lord and lives their life. I, I think the dog devoted would be, to the Lord. I think the dog would be, I be talking like that. <laughs> Anyways, God bless you guys. We love you. May Jesus carry you through the rest of this year, and may your table be full. Mm -hmm. May your utilities be met. May your bills. May, Lord be the Lord may He be the first thing life. that we think about daily. And tomorrow, let's praise Him again. It shouldn't be just like some people that go to church on, we call them the C&E Christians. It shouldn't be like that. Every day. Every day should be church with him. God bless you guys. Thank you. We love you. Take care. Bye. Are you going to turn it off now? How do I turn it off? Turn the little button. Push it. Push. This one? Yeah.